I will always have a million things to do, right? But I won't always have someone asking me to play. And that is a bummer, right? Everything's just going by way too quickly. And uh, I took this as an opportunity to sort of slow down and to recognize the times when I can be with the people who are the most important part of my world. And I would like to show them that they are the most important part of my world by accepting their invitations to play, following their lead and saying yes more when there's something they want to do that it's like, yeah, that'll make a mess. Oh, I don't have time for that. But you know, all that mom stuff I spew out there all the time because maybe I'm busy or I don't have the energy or it doesn't sound like something that's really thrilling for me, it might be thrilling for them. And welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Amanda Norris and I am a homeschool preschool mom. This week we are having a wild rumpus and lots of other cool stuff for week nine. Be sure to like and subscribe, hit the bell, and also check us out on Instagram at Foursquare Schoolhouse. For a nature study this week, we did a little dirt study. So this is something that my girls kind of just always do anyway. I have some dirty kids, but we were just a bit more intentional about it this week. So we collected a few Ziploc bags with dirt from their little patio digging space that we made for them recently, and also some soil from our garden bed. And then I actually had a friend bring over some soil from her yard too, and she came over to hang out one day. We were initially supposed to go camping that weekend, which would have been just the perfect opportunity to grab some dirt from the campsite, some sand from the beach, stuff like that. And then I was gonna make kind of a big deal of it, you know, putting each sample in one of the little cups of our mud kitchen muffin tin. It was all this awesome, bright, shiny, muddy idea in my head, but it was rainy and Hazel was miserable. So we just kind of bailed. We didn't go camping and we stayed home and did this instead. Now we looked at the dirt in the bags first and somehow Lucy was just able to announce which one was which, which was cool. I have no idea how she was able to identify them so easily. And then we dumped them out and kind of explored them a little bit outside of the bag, talked about the differences, the color, the texture. She recognized that one of them was kind of a, a more sandy texture and one was squishy. I asked her to kind of talk about why that might be. And she said it's because that one was wet because when my friend came over, she did get that dirt from her yard on a rainy day. And then we also kind of explored around in the dirt, looked for bits of other odds and ends in there too. Like there were some bark, sticks, pebbles. And we did this for a bit and then we actually just rolled right into our next lesson. So for math and science, we kind of just let it be easy this week and we combined all of those different dirt samples that we just gathered to make a little mud pie kind of thing that eventually somehow turned into a stew. Like I said, it's been a rainy week, so we had plenty of water that collected in different containers throughout the yard that she could mix in. We also had some mint and like random little flowers from the yard that got tossed in there. This was a much more mellow mud kitchen experience compared to what you usually happens. Of course, like on the day that I want to make like a thing of it, it just wasn't really happening. And that's okay. It just wasn't meant to be. But our mud kitchen space is always there. It's always available like on nicer days anyway. So we'll really just kind of continue this lesson in some way throughout the summer and the fall. Now we also had some conversation through the week about how important dirt is when it comes to food. Like how certain foods grow above ground, certain foods grow underground on trees, vines, stalks. And we even somehow got into a conversation about coffee beans. So conversation starters like this in the curriculum, I, I really like. I feel like they've been like these cool little checkpoints, a way for me to kind of see where she is. And then I know how I can scaffold, how I can extend on that a little bit, maybe to give her a little bit more information. In art this week, we moved on to Mary Cassatt and looked at her children playing on the beach painting. Now we really just spent maybe a few minutes noticing things in the painting, like the colors and subject matter. And then I asked her a few questions about her thoughts on the picture. And then we moved on to watercolors. The program guide said that we could either do wet on wet or wet on dry. So of course we had to do both. We've never soaked our paper before. So this was really fun and 
and different. And it was even better because she got to do both because she got to go back and forth instead of just working on a single piece with one technique. And it was really fun to compare them and to be able to see those differences in real time. Now the program guide said that we should use 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. Now that's like some bougie paper and I did not have that. I just had this paper pat here that I got ages ago when I thought that I would do watercolors for like a minute. And this paper worked just fine. If you have something similar laying around, I, I don't think you have to go out and purchase the paper that they recommend. We snuck this activity in during Hurricane Hazel's nap. So Lucy really got to kind of do her thing without interruption which was it was just so nice and it was so rare and I have a very poor concept of time but I know that we did spend a pretty good chunk of time on this I think that that added layer of sort of like like the sensory exploration and comparison I think that really held her interest and I would totally recommend doing both of the suggestions at once the wet and the dry For music this week, we were introduced to another classical composer, Florence Price. There wasn't much dancing or scarf stuff around here this week because we mostly did our listening at the table while we had breakfast or morning basket time, but we did check out our little instrument printable while we listened. And this is something that Lucy actually initiated herself because she recognized the piano and the violin and she wanted to find them and see what else she could find. So that was pretty cool. I'm really excited that she's actually using this without me shoving it in her face. Like she's thinking to grab it and reference it here and there. Now for kindness and connectivity this week, we were supposed to have a yes day. And I extended this into a yes week. Number one, we had a really busy week and I didn't really see a day available that we could really devote to having a yes day. And if we're gonna do that, I would like to do it well and actually be able to say yes. It would be kind of fun to sort of follow her lead throughout the day, but uh, this just wasn't the week for that. So we had a yes week. I kind of like this option better because it's something that's more sustainable and more beneficial in the long run. And I know that this was absolutely not the point of this lesson. Now, the point of the lesson was to have a freaking fun day saying yes and just kind of following their lead, letting them call the shots. But I kind of turned it into something that was more about me that in turn, I think benefits my kids. So really this lesson was more of a reminder for me to just stop and say yes more because often I can, like I can't always say yes, obviously. That's why the whole yes day thing isn't something that's sustainable. It's fun, but it's not sustainable. This is, I can sort of train myself to recognize those moments when I can say yes, where I can just put other things on hold that can go on hold because even though I have a million things to do, I'm always going to have a million things to do. That's not going anywhere, but her childhood, my, my girls being in this place where they are asking me to play, that is going somewhere. And it's going somewhere faster than I would like it to. And I can't talk about that. Um, <laughs> but... Our book this week was Where the Wild Things Are, which is obviously a classic. And we had this one, someone actually bought it for us for Lucy's baby shower. So before we even knew who she was or what she was, she owned this book. And we had a lot of fun with it this week. We kind of made a big deal out of it being like a wild rumpus kind of weekend. And it wasn't as concentrated as I would have liked it to have been. Like I wanted to make it like, all right, this is our wild rumpus and that's all we did. And that's not how it turned out. We ended up having things to do. We had company over. We just made a point of reading this book a few times and then adding in lots of different related activities through a long weekend. So we obviously read the book. We did put the movie on which was a little bit darker than I anticipated we didn't really get a chance to watch it because we had company over but we did have it on and the girls wore their little crowns that I crocheted for them and we talked about the book and the movie we did some activities that I'm going to link to down below there is a where the wild things are activity pack that you can get from royalbaloo.com and I'll put the link in there and it's 
awesome. Like I was gonna make up some stuff, but there were so many different things in this printable pack that I had no reason to do that. And Lucy really had fun doing it. We printed a lot of stuff out and then we laminated some pieces that I wanna be able to pull out over and over again and cut them. And there were some materials for sorting, for matching. There were puzzles, things for creating patterns. There was a little game with like a, a die that you could make. And it sort of zoned in on that book again. Like it brought our attention and focus back to the fact that we were having this wild rumpus through the weekend. Now we also made these little peg people. She made this little wild thing here. Her wild thing was the one with the striped shirt. And then she picked out two others for me to make. So I made Max and then the one with the, the wavy hair. But that was a really fun way of doing this too. So in addition to reading the book and checking out the movie a little bit, we also found a podcast, Mr. Matt Storytime, that had a reading of the book on there. So we asked ALEXA to play that for us on the porch and it was just another fun way to experience the book. Um, and I'm also going to throw in a different printable here. Before we did our wild rumpus, I just wanted to kind of clean up so that we could do that and I wouldn't have to be just feeling cluttered. You know, um, my brain doesn't function very well when everything is a mess. So I made this little wild rumpus checklist, which made it a little bit more fun for Lucy to help me to put things on this checklist and then to go around the house, um, do these things and check them off in preparation for our party. And uh, lastly, we made like wild rumpus pancakes. The parent guide said to make cupcakes together and I just, honestly, I didn't really feel like doing that. I didn't have the supplies and it just, I don't know, it wasn't a thing. So we did pancakes instead and we put crushed up graham crackers and chocolate chips on them and I made this one extra special large wild thing pancake at the end with the last bit of the batter and I was super pumped. I don't know. I just want to stick it in here to show off because honestly, I can't believe it turned out. When I flipped this mother over, I thought it was just going to be a hot mess, but it turned out really nice and Lucy loved eating the wild things face. So just know you don't have to make cupcakes, make it your own. If there's a way that you want to interpret this, if there's something you want to throw into your wild rumpus instead of cupcakes or whatever else is listed in that guide, and I would love to know about it. So please drop me a comment down below. I am absolutely going to do this again. Like I'm keeping all of those printables tucked away so that we can pull this out every once in a while and have another wild rumpus now and then. And I would love to be able to mix it up and incorporate different ideas. So let me know. All right, and then last things last, our kitchen classroom lesson for the week was incredibly simple. We didn't really have to do anything out of the ordinary. We just sort of focused on the focus for this week, which was temperature. Uh, so we talked a lot about the refrigerator and the freezer and how they're at different temperatures. We used frozen blueberries and with our room temperature Cheerios and our refrigerated almond milk. And that was actually really cool because the milk freezes on the blueberries and makes them all stick together. So that was kind of a fun experiment. And then we let other blueberries sit there and thaw out. We sliced up apples to make apple pancakes. And then the girls got to eat their cool crunchy apples while they waited for the hot pancakes to cool down enough that they could actually eat them. And then we also had some hot dogs because it was super nice out. Not pictured here was also some coleslaw and baked beans. So there were a lot of different temperatures to explore there too. And it was nice that there really wasn't anything special that we had to do. We just had to make what we always make and then talk about what the temperatures of those foods are. Uh, it was really just a matter of being mindful, remembering what our focus was for the week and then noticing as we made all of the foods, all the meals that we would usually make anyway. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining us for this wildish rumpus this week. I hope that you got some ideas and I hope that you find some time through the week, whether it's one day or all the days where you can find time and ways to say yes. It was definitely worth it. All that other stuff, you can find ways to just let it be easy and you can put it down for a little bit. I promise all that junk will be there when you come back. So have fun. Make sure you check back again next week for our continued adventures in week 10, 10 videos, guys. Uh, I might have some sort of a like bonus printable or something. I feel like it's a big deal that I actually got to 10 videos. And yeah, make sure that you like, subscribe, hit the bell if you haven't done so already. And check us out on Instagram at Foursquare Schoolhouse. And I'll see you next time. Later.